Hi, babes. It's me, Tia Coffee, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Final Frontier. Now, as you can see, I am sporting my iconic ginger bowl cut, which truly and finally makes me the Kris Jenner of drag. Now, on this episode, I am joined by one of my besties from season two of RuPaul's Drag Race, and she was on season three of RuPaul's Drag Race UK as well. She's an icon. She's a gamer. She's a singer. She's an actress. She's multi-talented. It's Veronica Green. Veronica Green, hello. Hello, Tia Coffee. Hi. <laughs> Hi. It's us off season two of Drag Grace. It is. Season two for the win. <laughs> Truly. Well, well, I did win. Thank you for noticing. Um, how funny. We're like one of very few people from the UK franchise who have been on more than one season. I know, right? It's what, me, you, Teresa Jombers, Gothy. And then Blue, Bagger, and Cheryl. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of few. It's quite... It's, you just said quite a few then. <laughs> well, it's one of eight. Many. As opposed to like, <laughs> what, 52 or something now? That's true. And there's going to be even more soon when the next season rolls around. Season six. Season is, six. is Has it been filmed? Is it coming? Who knows? Ooh, yeah, it's been filmed, yeah, right? Yeah, everyone knows. <laughs> it's, on, it's on Reddit doobie redditing. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of Reddit, I've not been on there for a while, so... Hi to the Reddit community. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so is this is this a secret we can share that you uh, have been known to dabble in perusing Reddit? Oh my gosh, I'm a lurker. Yeah, <laughs> well, I used to be a lurker, but I don't really anymore now. You you did used to. I used to quite enjoy, like, occasionally you'd send me screenshots of things from Reddit because I, like, refuse to go on it because I'm stressed that everyone on there is going to say that I should, like, jump in a well or something. <laughs> and sometimes they do, especially now. <laughs> we'll get another Ring sequel out of that, I think. <laughs> well, not now that I'm known for my bobs. I don't have <laughs> Samara's lengthy, gorgeous hair anymore. Um, but you are a bit of a Reddit lurker, or you were. Oh, yeah. I think, to be honest, like, back in the day, before Drag Race, I quite enjoyed watching the gossip side of it. Mm -hmm. And then when I got involved in Drag Race, I kind of distanced myself slowly over time because the more that you see negative things about yourself... The, can we swear on this podcast? Fuck yeah. The shitter it makes you feel. <laughs> yeah. So basically, um, like, obviously Reddit is a community that they're, they're not atting us or anything like that. So mm. like, it's nothing personal. But yeah, seeing a, a torrent of like, basically nobody in my corner. I think there was one person who was like Team Veronica Green because they felt sorry for me. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm Team Veronica Green because nobody else is kind of thing. And that was the point where I was like, yeah, I'm going to take a step away from this community <laughs> now because the gossipy part of it was fun. But now that I'm the subject of this, um, it's not so fun anymore. But I, I did lurk for a while just to keep an eye on what the fandom was saying because... Like, when you go to social media, there's different tribes. Like, the, this is just a worldwide... Like Grindr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a worldwide phenomenon, really, that the different the different apps, the different platforms have their tribes of people. And you've got the drag race followers on Twitter who have a certain ideology. You've got the <laughs> Reddit people yeah. that have their own point of view. The different subreddits, obviously, that are in conflict with each other sometimes. Hello, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race Drama channel. Um, and then <laughs> you've also got... Um, the, the Facebook people and the Instagram people, the different drag race communities all have different opinions and it's quite interesting to see what each little tribe of drag race followers are saying at any given time. Can I ask, are you on Drag Race Gone Wild yet? <laughs> I think I was, but I don't have any nudes. I'm discreet. <laughs> I don't even send my fiancé nudes just in case we break up one day, everybody. <laughs> well, I send your fiancé nudes. I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I know I've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I appeared on it after Bristol Pride and it was like one of my like greatest achievements because <laughs> I'm nothing if I'm not... Uh, a sucker for people telling me that I'm attractive. <laughs> oh, great. oh, you had you were you were one that people found attractive. Great, fantastic, gorgeous, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did they say about yours? Uh, well, um, I, I remember think... people saying that you were when there was a YouTube video of like our season out of drag before it aired, like, and you got lots of good comments on the that. The whole trade of the season thing. Well, the thing is that that 
the sort of like topless photos that I would share pre-drag race mm -hmm. was back when I was touring Joseph and I was in my little gym era. And I, cause I used to be stick thin, like knots in cotton was the only muscles that I had. There was no meat on my bones whatsoever. And I wanted to change that. So I went, started going to the gym, right. started getting a little bit toned, you know, not very much. I mean, I'm not an Adonis or anything like that, but I was quite proud of the way I looked. So I started doing the fake tan thing and all that. And because I felt good in myself, I would, I would post a couple of pictures. And then um, when I started doing more and more drag from 2018, 2019 onwards, mm -hmm. I was very much into the sort of like, I was feeling the femininity of it all more. So I sort of slipped away from the gym lifestyle, that masculine sort of energy that I was doing a couple of years prior. And... I, I sort of slimmed right back down again. So, you know, there's the, the thing is, is there's there's many facets to my personality. <laughs> but, you know, there's that nerdy side of me that likes to be dweeby and like puny. And then there is there is sort of like this other masculine side of me that is not visible, but it's just, I don't know, it's a brain thing that, that I've got. And sometimes I feel very masculine and manly. Well, I think you're in the right place right now because... Uh, we cherish and support our nerdy dweeby community at the final frontier. So, Well, I wouldn't be here otherwise, I don't think. <laughs> no, well, welcome to my living room. Um, we should probably talk yeah. about nerdy and dweeby things, actually, now that you've touched on that. Did I, did I segue quite nicely for you? You did segue, <laughs> which I like to pronounce segue because that's how it's spelled. Um, you did segue quite nicely there. You are a bit of a nerd, a bit of a geek. Um, and have your own Twitch channel where you stream regularly. Green Gamers, shout out to the Green Gamers out there. GG, everybody. Hope you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I'm not going to lie to you, I love the GG, everybody. That's, <laughs> that is my favorite intro. Um, how is all of that? Because you started that like, what, a year ago now? Yeah, I, I basically, it, it was off the back of Drag Race. You know, once, you know, season two, we were so popular. We had, we were, we were working so much. I thought it was never going to end. Like the jobs were just coming in and coming in and coming in. Mm -hmm. And then there was a point where the sort of hype had died down. And my diary sort of like had a few gaps in it at the time. And I was just like, oh, I need to be doing something. I need to be doing something. I need to be doing something. But I was like, what can I do to stay visible that's not going to cost me very much money? Because mm. I, mean, I, I I want to save whatever I earn. And so I was just thinking to myself, I need to find some way to be visible on social media because you know me, I don't really do very much social media. I'm not very good at No, but you do need to post more, my love. I you do. do. <laughs> you do. You better be sharing this, this I clip do. right now. I will share it like a month after it comes out. <laughs> no, literally the day. Poppy, can you make this into a little reel and make sure that Veronica Green yeah, is a collaborator it was, on it? It's part of the agreement, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would share the, it. The blood contract that you it signed upon blood entry. Contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But basically, I just decided to do it because it was something that I enjoy. It's a hobby that I have. Have something that I could do for basically free from my home. And now I get into drag twice a week and once out of drag. I'm doing a bit of a Danny Beard one day a week. <laughs> I'm doing the job out of drag. Danny Beard's doing a no day a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, I mean in drag, sorry. Oh, right, yeah. Danny's, Danny's <laughs> yeah. working a lot. But no, no shade, lot. yeah. Danny, Danny works a, a heck of a lot. Yes, but a lot of it's out of drag. Yes, yes, indeed. Yep. Um, well, we're called Danny Beard for a reason, everybody. Smart. Yeah, yeah, we're being, we're, we're being a little bit fruity today, aren't we? <laughs> fruity licious. Um, but to, back to the topic at hand, yeah, um, I just wanted to do something I enjoyed, found fun, that was not going to cost me anything, basically, and it's turned out to be a massive success. I've got mm. a thriving community that is growing day by day by day. I don't promote it very well. It'd probably be a bigger community if I promoted it more. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're promoting it right now. Yeah, but I have a great time. We... We have a good chat. Like, we spend the first hour of the stream just chatting to each other, just talking, having a laugh, you know, um, having some jokes with each other, catching right. up on what everybody's doing. Then we get into game, and I do all the voice acting for all the different characters in the game. I yes, love, I know, I've seen. I love story-based games where I can get into character. And the, the people who watch are in for the ride. We just have a laugh. It's just, we're playing video games for a few hours every couple of days a week. You know what I mean? It's not deep. Yeah, I enjoy catching up on your uh, 
your streams on YouTube because you post a lot on YouTube. Of, you did a whole series of The Legend of Zelda. Yes. Where, honestly, your your acting background <laughs> was the main reason that I was watching it. Because, like, the playthrough is all lovely, but I was watching to see you do the, do the voice acting. I get that an awful lot. A lot of people have said to me that... They, they don't like they don't like the visual aspect of it all, but they like to put it on the on in the background and listen. So almost like it's almost like a podcast in of it, in and of itself. It is, yeah, yeah, because people just like to listen to it. It's it's almost like I'm sort of like relaying the story to them. You are a natural storyteller. Yeah, one thing that I'm not a natural at is sight reading, though. <laughs> That's what I've realised. Yes, yeah. There's there's some. Uh... Some moments of slip ups. There's a lot of slip ups, especially on Twitch where you don't get to edit it all down. Mm. So, like, constantly sort of like my brain is thinking in the moment of, like, whoa, my gosh, we're meeting a new character. What voice are they going to have? And can I speak English right now? Because I'm getting the words all jumbled up. <laughs> Me, honestly, on this podcast, sometimes I'm like, um, I don't know what words I'm saying right now. Because it is difficult sort of like thinking and like reacting in the moment. Oh yeah, absolutely. But that's why I chose The Legend of Zelda first mm -hmm. because it's one of my favorite game franchises and it's something that connected me to my childhood. And I realized that I'd not played very many of the more recent games. Mm. The, the ones that I'd played last were from my childhood. So I decided to reconnect with that and then play the newer stuff. So I'm having a blast playing those games. But I, I've now started branching out into a bit more variety. I play, I'm currently playing Pokemon Violet, getting into the Pokemon era with Good. my community. And then also we have a community day where I'm playing Fortnite at the moment. And my, okay. and my community play that with me. Mm -hmm. Because for the last few months, I my name has popped up on the Fortnite survey, right? I've seen it. Of all the drag queens in all the world... My name. I'm under Henry Cavill, everybody. I would love to be under Henry Cavill. So, well, I am. <laughs> so there you go. Um, and I have been on that survey three or four times now in the last six, six seven, eight months, something like that. So I was just like, I'm going to take the hint. I'm going to get involved, try it out. Do it. And I am obsessed. It's a great, it's just a great, it's not very serious it's not that competitive. I'm not doing the ranked version or anything like that. It's just me and the community members. We get on stream together and have a blast. And it's a good community builder, I think, that game. Yeah, for sure. If that's what people who are watching you want, then you've got to engage with it and you're enjoying it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Getting on getting on that um, sort of like live feed three times a week, mm. I, I didn't realize just how much I would enjoy it. Because initially I started off just recording myself, playing the games, then editing the footage, releasing it, and then engaging with the YouTube comments. But when I started the Twitch, it just took it to a whole new level. Like the people that love me and love video games mm -hmm. are all congregating together. And my community now, they go and support each other. And a lot of them are drag queens themselves and community members are going to support each other at drag shows. Wow. Um, some some have become actual friends that hang out now, go to different expos together. A couple of my members went to the Pokemon Expo um, last month and met up and had a little um, catch up together. And they met through joining this community. And I think that's the best thing ever that people initially tuned in for me, but they've made some new real life friends and I think that's just wonderful. I love that. You heard it here first. Green gamers bringing geeks together. Yeah, they're called my meanions as well. Because <laughs> of Veronica Bean? Yeah, well, it depends because if I'm in a bit of a spicy, sometimes I'm a little bit shady. We we throw a little bit of shade, a bit of drag race gossip you, and all never. that kind of stuff. <laughs> so they're my meanions when they're being shady. But when we're being um, very, very nice and light and polite and lovely, they're my evergreens. So... I've, that is the whole split personality thing. I can be I can be nasty and I can be nice and get away with it now. <laughs> Thanks for the branding, horror and Ginny Lemon. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you should release a cover of Will Young's Evergreen for that reason. Oh yeah, yeah. I, it's a good song. Oh my gosh! Wait, what? How does it go? I can't remember it. I'm gonna take this moment <gasps> and make, make it last forever. forever. <laughs> 
I'm gonna give my heart away and pray. You should pray do that. Pray together. Isn't oh it great? Gosh, yeah, the Dua Leaper of drag, everybody. Look at that. <laughs> and uh, well, what are you? If I'm the Dua Leaper of drag. The Jane Horrocks, I guess. <laughs> Jane Horrocks. I do see that for you. Yeah. Niche reference. For, yeah. <laughs> for anyone under 30, that was a niche reference. Um, you mentioned Pokemon. Yes. And the recent Pokemon Expo and the fact that you are playing Violet at the moment. Have you got one single favourite Pokemon? Difficult question, I know. Uh, okay, I've answered this question a bazillion times. It's hands down Ninetales. Um, and what is your reason for that nomination? Oh, it's just, it's such a majestic Pokemon. I like the Pokemon that it evolves from, Vulpix. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just so beauty, beautiful, majestic. The, the sort of like fire type and all the tails and stuff. I don't know. It's the aesthetics, I guess. I, the way you are wearing red hair right now, so yes, I see. Yes, I know. Well, I'm shallow at heart, aren't I? I just like the way it looks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's fair. You do drag. It makes sense. Yeah. I, see, I always say like Eevee or Bulbasaur. <gasps> oh, Eevee's a great one though. A world of options for the evolution. So versatile. Very, <laughs> very me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so vers. Yeah, I love it. What, what evolution is of Eevee though what you, would you go for? I think that's like impossible to answer because I think it's entirely dependent on mood it's the same with like my feelings towards legendary birds that it like changes every time oh my gosh right okay. because it <laughs> it totally depends on mood. It's the same as like whether you're an evergreen or a minion oh like I feel like you get the luxury of choice yeah so you would have like basically like one of each stone on each finger. Be like Captain Planet and pick one. Your mood ring of the day will decide which yeah. TV you will become. <laughs> An infinity gauntlet of EV evolution possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> Jolteon, go! <laughs> <laughs> Very that. Very that. I like have such fond memories of playing Pokemon, but I never got... like I'm like original, like I'm aging myself. I don't know if uh, anyone listening now listened to the episode I did with Max Beleg Day, but um, the age difference was clear. I stopped at like 150 slash 151. Yeah. I've got no idea what happens after that. Like Max was talking about this, that and the other from like Pokemon, Lord knows what. And I had no idea, not yeah. a clue. Well, this is, the, but this is the great thing about me going on the Pokemon journey with my community because there are some Pokemon nuts in my community. Yes. And I've got, I, I played Pokemon Red back in the day. I played Pokemon Yellow mm -hmm. and then I got... Me and my brother, Drag Sister, Fantasy Queen, shout out, woohoo. Um, <laughs> we got gold and silver. Fantasy played them, and I only sort of like played a little bit of gold or silver. I can't even remember which one. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sort of like the original generation, and then on the Game Boy, um, and then have not really played anything else since. I played Pokemon Stadium on the N64, a tiny bit of Pokemon Snap, but. <clears throat> that's it. So like this new whole open world generation of Pokemon with Violet was chosen by my community, by the way. We had a poll oh, right. of what I was going to play. They picked Pokemon and then they picked whether I was going to play Violet or Scarlet. Um, yeah, it's Scarlet, Scarlet, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kept saying Ruby when we were doing the poll. So maybe I was kind of nudging them in one direction. <laughs> but um, but yeah, they chose it for me and I'm going on the journey with them. And it's it's so great having them sort of like fill me in and guide me along the wow. way. Because generally I don't like the backseat gaming. In the Zelda games, I don't like people telling me how to solve the puzzles, where to go for the story and Fair. stuff like that. Whereas with the Pokemon game, I I want to be on stream each week at the correct level to take on the gym leader that week. So I rely on my community sort of like giving me hints and tips of where to go. Okay. So yeah. That's so funny because you're talking about how you play Zelda. I laughed because I was like, that is so you in like real life being like, I don't need anyone to help me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I am strong and uh, st stubborn. And yeah. I was like, that's yeah. very funny. That's very you. Maybe you should pay your rent. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. Mind your business. <laughs> What's a water bill? I'll do it in my own time. Very that kind of energy. No, I love that you're also using like this interaction, this community to sort of like guide you through this new era of gaming. <laughs> Were you, like, back in the day, were you, like, a, 
a Pokemon trading card game type person? A little bit, yeah. Like, I never really played it, but I collected the cards. Same. And let me tell you something. Oh, my gosh. I used to work at Booker's Cash and Carry when I was 16. Shout out to them. Shout, shout out Booker's Cash and Carry. Um, and <laughs> they, so, like, they're like a wholesaler that sell to, like, news agents and stuff like okay. that. And when Pokemon was all the rage, they were flying off the shelves, the boxes of trading cards. And then when it sort of, like, died, down, they had all of these leftover cards that they just couldn't sell, the mm. boxes of cards. So they just offered them out to the staff. And my auntie, who also worked there at the time, she was like, oh, they've got these Pokemon cards that they're just giving away. And I was like, I'll have them. And I got like 20 boxes of the booster packs. Oh my God. So me and my cousins, we had so many of the cards. I think I've still got a bunch of them at home in a little flip thing me too but i've not um i've not revisited my childhood bedroom for a while so i, I don't know exactly where they are but i've got like a flip book with all the ones that i've got missing and uh, me and my cousins would trade them and stuff it was great oh my god i need to go back to my dad's and see if i've still got mine because uh for the generation that don't know you would collect the cards but you had like these specific like clear plastic like things that had like slots for each card. Yeah. The same with Pogs. Do you yeah. remember Pogs? Yeah, Pogs, yes. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. And then there was also something similar, wasn't there, with the Spice Girls when they had the photograph album. Yes. And then S Club 7 tried to do the same thing and it didn't work, but I still collected them because yeah. I was obsessed with Hannah from S Club 7. Oh my God. And I think everyone thought that I fancied her, but I actually just wanted to be her. Oh. <laughs> I fancied Paul. That's what I was That's... like with Rachel Stevens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that is a little like uh, little gay boy journey that you want to be your favorite pop girl. I d idolized those the women, yeah. The sort of like those strong female pop stars. I, I loved them. It's, I mean, it's the... It's, it's the what they stand for, mm. that empowerment, and then also just the costumes and the hair and the makeup. Pretty the, girls. Oh my God, they're gorgeous. Yeah. And now we are those pretty girls. <laughs> I had, looking at your hairdo, I got the uh, Victoria Beckham asymmetric bob in the 90s. I got um, <laughs> a hairdresser to do that for oh, me. Oh my God. I had one side of my hair up here and the other side of my hair up down there. It looked hideous on me. <laughs> I looked like a freak. Have you got a photo of it? Probably, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, producer probably. Poppy, we we are now on screen here on my hand, putting up a picture of Veronica Green with an asymmetric pop, yeah. posh spice bob with the curtains with one at this length and one at this length. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's actually hysterical. And the and I wanted the spice girl. I wanted the baby spice platform white pumps mm -hmm. we couldn't find them anywhere so my dad just bought these sort of like wedges like it was like a it was like a platform but it was like one block yeah and he sawed a heel out of it <laughs> like a little triangle out of it to make it look like a heel that's nice though <laughs> yeah that's very supportive yeah most people wouldn't and those baby spice shoes like everyone has them now do you know what my dad is uh, looking back my dad was really supportive he bought me a doll really yeah yeah, I said I wanted a doll when I was probably seven or eight years old and he, he bought one for me. Do you remember what doll it was? Um, I think it might have been a She-Ra doll, I think. Nerd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't really remember what she looked like. It could very well have been one of those spinny things. Have you seen the meme where they do the, they do the thing and it goes into the fire? Oh, that upsets me so much, <laughs> it, that poor child. No. It might have been one of them because I did have one of them as well, but... I, f I think it was a She-Ra doll, yeah. So your dad was very supportive of your sort of uh, queer nerd energy growing up. Yeah, which is weird because back in the day, I don't, he won't mind me saying this, he was very homophobic. <laughs> well. Yeah, I mean, he's a very, you know, man's man, northern mm. um, dad. He was a roofer, you know what I mean? He's a bit rough around the edges. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that, that's interesting, the sort of like support of your child... In, in those kinds of moments. I remember, well, you were there at the, the finale viewing party. Yeah. And my 70-year-old father came wearing a rainbow tie. Yeah, I know. It was great. That was so emotional for me. Yeah, it was just, it's that full circle moment of when, like when I was growing up, not knowing how it would go because society in general was very much anti-gay and mm. that whole 
the whole trope that you that we're quite bored of now in soaps and TV and media of like somebody coming out and then the dad disowning them was like, yeah. we, we told that story a million times, let's move on and tell a different queer story. That's what life was actually like for so many queer kids, gay kids growing up. And I was afraid that, you know, this being this feminine and, and being potentially a gay kid, mm. that I was going to get disowned by my family. And looking back now, not realizing just how supportive they were. But it was a genuine fear for you. Yeah. Oh, well, I would, because I'm quite a feminine person, I like a lot of people didn't know whether I was a boy or a girl growing mm. up. I would get called boy girl or girl boy by the bullies and wow. adults, depending on what, what gender they thought I was that day. Mm. Um, and I would walk to school sometimes getting stones thrown at me by, by all the nasty kids. So yeah, I was... I was it, it, the weird thing for me is that I didn't realise I was gay until years and years later when I'd, my brain had grown into understanding what that meant. Mm. It was everybody else was telling me I was gay before I knew what it even meant. Wow, and, and doing it in such a, a way that sort of made you... I guess feel scared or like ashamed of what that could possibly mean for you. The whole the whole thing with around shame and how you're not going to be successful, you're not going to be have a career because it's even hammered in the teachings, you know, when you go to drama school and things like that, you have to suppress your queerness otherwise you're not going to be um you're not going to be a successful actor or whatever. Yeah, you can't be a leading man if you're not masculine. That's, that's what, the theory. That's Well, that's what I was told. I was told you will never be a leading man because mm. you're not man enough. That A casting director told me I was not man enough and some teachers told me I would never be a leading man. Um, so it's like hearing those words that it's very brutal and it's just like the, the, all of that sort of like being beaten down by masculinity not pos not possessing it in an mm. outward fashion like that's visible that is what made me then go oh i'm not going to be i'm not man enough okay then well let's embrace the femininity and the feminine side of me then and the this this side of me and of myself is um a product of all of that that um projection from those people yeah so. i mean that's reclamation isn't it you were told that you wouldn't be a leading man so you became a leading lady yeah but the ironic thing is is that those horrible nasty people that is they're so easy to block out nowadays because mm. they would tell me that that, that that i was not man enough and then as soon as i started doing drag they want to point out my jawline or my beard or my shoulders and that oh you're a man and it's just like it took me doing this for you to acknowledge that I'm a man. <laughs> like you can't win. The, the I think it's just the twisted mentality of people that have nothing but hate in their hearts. True, and I wonder also if that is something that's played into what you said at the start, which is like this. Um, I guess like conflict that you've had between like the masculinity and the femininity, femininity throughout yeah. your life. Yeah, I've I've constantly sort of like flip the balance because. I, I, I wouldn't say, I, I don't label it as gender fluid or anything like that. I label myself as, I know that I'm a man. That's how I feel. I feel mm. very, very masculine. But I've just got this aura of femininity that just radiates from me that everybody can see. So how I feel, people can't see that. They can only see what they can see. Mm -hmm. So I constantly, the, the internal struggle has been this balance of how I feel inside with how I look and finding the life balance of what I'm actually happy with and what makes me happy. Um, and the, the whole masculine side of it is something I do still waver on because it would be nice to to have some muscles every now and again. Mm. But then when I look in the mirrors, I don't always, I don't always want that because I like the femininity as well. So it's, it's, it's a constant internal struggle of I do like that but I don't want it always that's so interesting because that is one of the aspects I guess that is quite freeing of doing drag is that you can kind of like embrace every aspect of your sort of like gender identity or how you feel or just like for for me like I just now see it sounds so silly but I just see clothes as clothes so I can literally in or out of drag wear what I want yeah 
and that is so freeing. Yeah, and I think that's the the element of drag that I love the most is that what it's taught me is that dressing up in a in a costume or in an outfit can be translated to everyday life as well, and that bringing out this inner part of me through the way that I look mm-hmm. is also expressed in how I feel when I'm just in my sweats at home as well. Yeah, there's times when I'm strutting around in the kitchen now be feeling so free whereas before i would i would feel a bit a bit more inward about it all that's interesting i love the fact that this is the best thing about the podcast is like as much as it's meant to be about being like nerdy and geeky <laughs> somehow we seem to weave our way into like quite like interesting and deeper topics Oh, well, nerdy and geeky stuff is deep and interesting. <laughs> yes, no, that too. But I like the fact that it's not sort of like, what's your favorite computer game? Yeah, it's also like, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about gender identity? Yeah, oh my gosh. Well, the thing is, is I have a natural tendency to, to go into deeper topics because I'm a very silly, silly, silly person. Mm-hmm. But I do have like a lot of serious things I'd like to get off my chest. And sometimes I just don't know... I'm not very good at time and place kind of things. I just sort of blurt things out as I feel it. So sometimes I'll be saying something really inappropriately stupid at a very serious time. And then at other times when we're all having fun in a bar or whatever, I'll suddenly start talking about like politics or something that's not the time, not the place. Oh my God. No, (laughs) I must tell everyone listening, if you have never been on a night out with Veronica Green, you will be um, going out with someone who starts the evening sort of like very calm, very like getting everyone together, like when are the taxis, all of that kind of energy. Then when you get there, you'll be out with someone who about half an hour to an hour in is suddenly buying rounds of shots and getting everyone uh, in the party mood. And then probably about two hours after that, you'll be like, where's Veronica? And you'll find her like sat in the corner having like a really intensely deep personal conversation with someone. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who that is. Veronica will find like, like you'll turn around and you'll be like, where's Veronica? And see her going, but where does that come from in your childhood? Yeah. Like it suddenly <laughs> out of nowhere happens. And then you're all ready to leave. And Veronica's like, I think I might stay until close. <laughs> and I that's every yeah. single time. Oh my gosh. That is literally my night out in a nutshell. Like, yeah, I love it. And I'm always one of the last to leave. It's, every time. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? And you always make new friends. Yeah. That's like the key thing. I'm really bad at making like new friends because I am strangely shy and not forward when like meeting new people. But you're like so good. You just like click with someone. Well, this is a learned behavior from me because when I started doing drag, I was afraid to talk to people mm-hmm. because I was still getting to know what who the persona was, right? Whereas n- now it's just me, right? Mm. The, the persona is kind of just a heightened version of me. But when I first started doing drag, I was so afraid of speaking to people that people thought I was a bitch. They thought I was snooty and up myself. Veronica Mean. Yeah, they, they thought I was I, f- I was too good to come over and talk to anybody. Mm. When I was actually just like a shitting dog in the, in the corner, afraid to yeah. speak. So learning that me being afraid was projecting something completely different to other people, I then had to learn to get over that, approach people and just start talking and what I found from that was that it, it, I then learned how to get into conversations with people because it wasn't something that came naturally to me. I'm not I'm not very good naturally with people. I've had to learn good conversational skills to get the, to get the party started, to get the conversation right now. flowing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, teach me those skills because when I'm on a night out, I'm like, oh, this well, person is scary. W- one good thing one one key piece of advice is to ask questions if there's a bit of dead air mm-hmm. just find a question to ask because there's there's always a conversation to be had from just asking a question and that is everything that i do on this podcast yeah. is ask questions yeah. and then listen to responses yeah, the question remains <laughs> <laughs> that's true how have you managed to get get the party started right now and the question remains in about 30 seconds. Well, it just, it's its the way my brain works. And this is why sometimes I rub people up the wrong way. And this it comes, this loops back around to the inappropriate things. Mm-hmm. Whereas my brain is constantly just trying to find the pun. Like I'm trying to find the fun in the pun and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And sometimes I will just bring a pun out at a really 
inappropriate time when it's really not needed. <laughs> and then sometimes I make a few um, faux pas as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I, I love that. As soon as you said that, I just got every intrusive thought. I wanted to shout so many inappropriate things. Yeah. yeah. But I won't because yeah. that would be inappropriate. Um, but, but thankfully, like, I'm surrounded by great friends who know me as a person who understand that that's how my brain works. Yeah. I love the dad jokes as well and that kind of stuff. So. If I can find a, a, a phrase or a saying, my brain just naturally connects sentences together and 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 segues on. Segues. Yeah, segues. Yeah, yeah. As we said at the start. And in fact, we have come full circle, Veronica, because would you believe we have reached the end of this uh, episode of the podcast. Are you joking? I'm not even I joking. I thought this was the intro. <laughs> yeah, honestly, this is the problem because we could just talk. And um, producer Poppy sprung up about 10 minutes ago saying you've got 10 minutes left. This is not the end. It, well, it's not quite the end because there is one thing that we like to do on the final frontier and that is put your acting skills to the test. Oh, well, I'll tell you what then. Let me stop you right there because before okay. that... I- I need to give you a gift before we finish. A right. gift? I've brought something for you. Yeah, it's self-promotion, everybody. I'm, I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for you. Well, I love a gift, <laughs> so that still helps me. So, I a present. Yeah, over at my community at the moment, they've been wanting, because like with streaming and stuff, they, they sit for hours and hours and hours, mm. and they always want, um, they've always got a drink with them. Um, and seeing as how you're tea or coffee, <gasps> we've, we've designed the Green Game a mug. And I wanted to give you, I wanted to gift you one of them. That's gorgeous. um, To promote my channel. (laughs) Honestly, I am a Twitch minion. You are a Twitch minion. GG, everybody, Veronica Green. And that's you looking like a blend of uh, Rogue from the X-Men. Yes. And also Zelda of The Legend of Zelda. Link from The Legend of Zelda. Yeah, exactly. Link, that's the one. Can can we cut it so I know what I'm talking about? Thanks. (laughs) Um, and also Link from The Legend of Zelda. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad you got the references. I did. Yeah. That's fabulous. Oh, that's perfect. Look, visuals for everyone who's watching. If you're not watching, it's a lovely... Well, if you're listening rather than watching, it's a lovely mug, yeah. green on the inside, and it's got imagery of Veronica Green as a super heroine on the outside. Initially, I thought it was lipstick proof, but I realized it must just be something that's sort of like coating the mug. So make sure you wash it properly before using it, unlike I did. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you so much. I'll give it a lovely scrub. Um, I'll pop it on the table. Yeah. But seeing as you are giving um, a very much an X Men vibe, and I know you're a big X Men fan. Oh, yeah. How would you feel about doing a scene from? The X-Men. Yeah, let's do it. Producer Poppy, what have you prepared for us? For the people listening at home, Producer Poppy knows nothing about X-Men. I don't know. I don't even know which film this is from. No, I'm not even sure if it... It must be one of the films. Okay, it's a, it's a script from somewhere in the X-Men universe. Okay, page 64 appears to be Rogan Storm, which I feel like we give Rogan Storm energy. Okay. What film is even this from? We Right, we don't actually know what X-Men script this is, um, but what happened was Poppy Googled X-Men script, oh, and this is what's come oh, up. No. I just don't know what version of Rogue to do. There's been so many over the years. You can do whatever version of Rogue you want. Yeah, you're Storm, right? I'm always Storm. Okay. But the thing is, when we tend to do these acting challenges, I disregard any original characterization and end up always playing them northern. Okay. Well, we can we can do this in a fun, silly way. I love I, I just feel like I act better with a northern accent. Yeah. What do you do? You want to like really go for the American? No, we could. Do, uh, let's make them both like Northerners then. Okay, Rogue and Storm from the X Men, but Northern AF. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. If I'm Southern, I'm reading stage directions. If I'm Northern, I'm Storm. <laughs> so we're going from the the top of page sixty four, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Rogue runs up the escalator and runs right into Storm, nearly touching her. You don't have to run. Interior, food court later. Rogue and Storm have a cup of coffee. Oh, branding. Um, By a glass railing that looks down on the rest of the mall. I fell off the wagon hard. I feel like if I don't touch another human being... She starts to cry now. (laughs) It's okay. 
<laughs> no, I don't want to live like this. All of us have those days. But you, you can't, you can touch. You're not alone. No one is alone like I am. That may be so, but you were put here for a reason. I could see that look. What look is that? That look people get when they want to touch you. Oh, sorry. To make you feel better. I see that look all the time. It ends with this expression. I'm sure lepers know pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Rogue, you bitch. Uh, oh, gee, just Rogue. then, Rogue looks down and sees Cyclops on the lower level, obviously searching for her. I'll touch you. Rogue's attention snaps back to Storm. <gasps> what? I said, I'll touch you. Is that what you want to hear? <gasps> Here. She reaches for Rogue, who recoils. <laughs> Don't! I'm serious, come on! Go away! <laughs> Please! I didn't mean it! Then you touch me! No! Then quit your crying! Stop complaining about how hard it is to be you! You want to die! Go and kill yourself! <laughs> what the fuck? Storm, you bitch! <laughs> wow. What do you? Otherwise, stop being a martyr. Get over yourself. Rogue looks at Storm in shock. <gasps> Rightfully so. Uh, but not so much as to notice something on her shoulder, a movement on the other side of the mall. Well, that's the end of that scene. Storm told Rogue to go and unalive herself. Oh my gosh, it's like the DMs that I get. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> relatable content. Relatable. Oh, and we remove the laptop. Sorry. Producer Poppy, everyone. Yay! <laughs> um, so that was a bold scene that we chose. Wow! Didn't realise that Storm was kind of a bitch. I didn't realise Rogue was kind of a bitch. It's like coming the... for the leper community. Honestly, <laughs> how dare. Um, Veronica Green, on that note, thank you so much for joining me here on The Final Frontier. I mean, can we not do another episode together? I feel like we've just got started. <laughs> I think, honestly, if you want a part two, comment below. I feel like we kind of have to, because what happened was <laughs> we spoke about literally one aspect of your geekiness and then a lot of drag, and then we did a scene, because we are chatty. We talk to each other differently, maybe, from how previous episodes have gone. And one thing that I've noticed about myself as well is that just a single sentence of mine can last two minutes. <laughs> I have also noticed that. <laughs> I've noticed that from our two-hour phone conversations where we called to have a five-minute chat. And two hours later, you're like, oh, we haven't even spoken about what we were meant to. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I've got to go now. But the amount of times, though, where we go, right, I'll see you later. Oh, actually, before I go, I just need to tell you about this thing. Yeah, that happens all the time. And then another hour's gone by. Yeah, no, it's really bad. And if we don't end this episode of the podcast, another hour will go oh, by. All right, okay. Poppy, <laughs> yeah. Poppy's lurking, being like, end, end stream. Cut the feed, cut the feed. Um, cut the thank feed. you so much. <laughs> and um, before you go, tell everyone where we can find you. What's your Twitch channel? What's your Instagram? Tell us everything that's coming up for Veronica Green. Uh, yeah, my Twitch channel is Veronica Queen, spelt the the pretentious way, Q-W-E-E-N. You can find <laughs> me as Veronica Queen on Instagram as well. Um, same for Facebook, I think. Uh, I don't do Twitter anymore, everybody. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Um, and then you can also find me on YouTube as well. I stream Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 1pm till 5. Come and join the fun. We've got a great community over there. GG, everybody. G yeah. Oh, yeah. And until you do that, everybody, it's GG from me. Lots of love and bye for now. <laughs> I think that's the end. Yeah. <laughs>